Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Kamov KA50 Hokum. It, it was a 148 scale kit from Atallery, number 845. It's out of production now, but you can still find it online at a lot of the auction sites and larger retailers. Now the Hokum was a single seat Russian attack helicopter with a coax rotor system. And that was pretty efficient design for the 1980s because it allowed uh, to remove the tail rotor, which improved efficiency and in aerobatics. Now, the uh, helicopter's top speed was about 196 miles an hour, and it had a range of 339 miles. It was also fitted with a 30 millimeter uh, cannon mounted in the center and could carry a substantial load of weapons up to 4,000 pounds of which on hard points under the wings. This kit was reboxed by Tallery, it's, as I said, number 845, in 2010. They just changed the box from previous issues. Now there are also aftermarket photo etch and parts available for this kit to make it more realistic. It was molded in about 125 gray pieces and 9 clear parts, and they are all dedicated to the build. When you're done, it's about 13 inches long, 11 inches wide, and 4 and a half inches tall. Here are the contents of the kit. Uh, as you can see, a couple of sprues and a sprue of clear parts. But um, we'll be using Model Master liquid cement for most of the build, sometimes super glue, and then white glue for clear parts. But please remember to heed any of the safety and use uh, guidelines from the manufacturers of any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. Here are the decals for the kit. The register is pretty good and the colors are nice. And for the larger ones, you may want to use some setting solution to get them to settle and nestle into any of the panel lines or crevices that are on the body. Construction starts with the cockpit area. And there are uh, a number of online uh, walk-arounds that will give you a better indication of... Uh, uh, colors and things so you might want to reference the internet for those but um, we're going to uh, start with these pieces always test fit your uh, parts for you know placement now attach the control stick uh, and the back wall to the bottom of the cockpit before painting them flat black I painted the seat belts a light tan with silver buckles and the ejection seat handles are red then I dry brush the switches and gauges with some silver and highlighted some of those with clear red and blue. Now you can go ahead once you've got your detailing done and assemble the rest of the cockpit parts. Remember to scrape off any paint uh, from contact surfaces where there are glue points so that you get a good adhesion. And then go ahead and test fit the part in the left side of the fuselage before gluing it into the uh, place and in front in the front landing gear well area. Locate the rotor hub parts and go ahead and clean those up. You'll see some ejection pin marks and some sprue tabs that need to be cleaned up as well as some parting lines. While test fitting the parts I found an instruction error. Part 11B would not fit on part 7B as shown so I found that part 8B has the proper diameter hole in the center to fit and part 11B fits in later instead of that. I also decided to deviate from the instructions and not glue part 18B into place so that I can paint the rotor blades and hubs separately. I show them assembled here. The next section will use 11B instead of 8B, 12B and 14B so clean those up and attach them to part 7B. They're keyed for proper alignment. Assemble the parts uh, with the control arms and then for uh, the last step there's uh, two smooth out of three rotor control arms they're number 13B and three more control arms that are 15B and place them on the previous assembly as you see here in the diagrams uh, to get the um, uh, sub-assembly finished. So get out the fuselage halves and some related pieces you see here with panels, etc. And we'll work on these next. 
Now paint the interior of the fuselage pieces that you can see there in the cockpit flat black along with uh, the intake scoop area there uh, on the fuselage and let that dry. Next, glue the uh, gun mount, that's piece 21A, through the hole in the fuselage half uh, 19A and then glue 20A and 21A and make sure that the two holes in 21A uh, are vertical with the fuselage as shown. Avoid getting glue on part 19A so that the other tar uh, two parts will uh, rotate and place the cockpit on the fuselage half 19A with some uh, liquid cement for some adjustment time along with 17B and 16B, the rotor base assembly. Now attach 24A to 19A, the fuselage halves, and then use some clothes pins, rubber bands, and clamps uh, to hold 17B in place through the hole in the fuselage where the transmission cover, which is piece 22B, will be placed. Now cut the uh, two pieces of the sprue uh, to slide through the slot on the sides of the fuselage to hold 17B in place. And these slots will be covered by the engine cowling later in uh, future steps. Test fit uh, parts 22B and 23B. And you'll note that the fuselage halves don't align very well. There's almost an eighth inch uh, offset in the panel lines. And the openings um, will require some sanding and filling and rescribing. Use your favorite uh, modeling putty. I use um, 3M uh, glazing and spot filling putty. Uh, it tends to dry fast and you can um, cut it down, thin it a bit with uh, acetone if needed and brush it on. Once you've got everything smoothed out to your satisfaction, uh, it's time to start rescribing the panel lines that were destroyed in the process. I use an old credit card for straight lines these uh, advertising cards work pretty well too. I just use the back of a hobby knife blade but there are a lot of scribing tools out there if you prefer to use one of those. Now we're going to work on the uh, left engine half here and the um, horizontal stabilizer and the instructions are pretty vague in this area um, so just remove all the seam lines from these pieces and the sprue gates and clean those up for assembly. I deviated a bit from the directions, only placing uh, engine parts 30A and 31A and the horizontal stabilizer and the handle, part 69B, landing gear door number 27A on the fuselage because I want to paint the other parts um, separately and I'll just airbrush the entire fuselage like this for a good clean look. Now we're going to mirror that for the right side uh, pieces and uh, again we're not going to put them all into position. We use the same similar pieces for uh, the right side. And after cleaning uh, those up with a hobby knife and some sandpaper, I just put the engine parts 38A and 39A, uh, the landing gear door 37A, and the handle 69B on the fuselage. Then, as you can see here, uh, the parts that were left over that it didn't use in this assembly, I put them into a little cup and label them so they know uh, which side they go to. It's, um, it's just easy to keep things straight that way for future um, assembly. The next step of the instructions involves the uh, heads-up display, that's 76C, the canopy, which is 77C, and the wiper is 77A. And I removed the canopy and the door from the sprue and coated them with some of the uh, pledge floor finish uh, and wicked it off and let them dry earlier. And now they're ready for assembly. So uh, we'll paint the sides of the heads-up display flat black and attach that uh, into the cockpit. Then mask the canopy and place 77C onto the fuselage and fill the gaps with uh, some testers clear part cement uh, and or or your favorite clear part cement, even white glue uh, if that's all you have. Now locate the gun pieces uh, 42 and 43B and uh, they're assembled and set aside for later assembly. Now step 7 in the uh, instructions uh, includes the ordnance pieces that you see here and the hard points. Um, that's uh, 55, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60, 61, 2, and 3B, and 64A. And um, those will be used in the next assembly section. 
Assemble the rockets 63 and 64B in the rocket tubes 56, 7, 8, and 9B and set them all aside. Subassemblies for the horizontal stabilizer and the uh, left stub wing parts uh, for step 8 can be assembled. The clear parts uh, 47C, which is actually turns out to be 49C on the sprue, then 48 and 54C will remain on the sprue until the fuselage painting gets complete. Next you can glue the vertical stabilizers and the horizontal stabilizer and assemble the uh, stub wing parts with uh, some liquid cement and use some clothespins to keep those clamped in the correct position. Now after the stub wing parts dry, glue the hard points, those are 55B and 60B to the wing, then attach them to the fuselage. Now pull the uh, right side stub wing and related parts out of the kit and assemble those uh, parts and the hard points the same fashion as you did on the left side. In step 10, we'll take the engine scoops, those are parts 33B, and its handle 69B, the canopy roof part 78A, then the cockpit door which is 79C, the fuselage hatch 80A and some of the aerials 81, 2, and 3A and assemble those for a subassembly. I added a little tape grab handle here, uh, uh, you can see the tweezers are holding that, uh, attached to the um, uh, masking for the a canopy door and you can pose that either open or closed so I opted for closed uh, so I trimmed off the hinge points and, and, uh, and used the tape here so that I could handle it. Now there are no uh, positive attachment points for it and the instructions are kind of vague so I used the photos and the panel lines to estimate where it goes. The other parts uh, went on just fine as shown for the canopy sections. With the airframe to this part um, Step uh, 11 has, you know, has the landing gear 71, 2, 3, and 4, or 3B and 74A, but I had only attached 74A earlier because the landing gear get, will get painted separately. So, um, also the clear parts will be added later. Now it's time to prime the uh, airframe with, um, you know, some fine mist. You don't, you don't want the paint to bleed under any of the masking tape. And it'll also show some imperfections and you may need to do a little light sanding to get that straightened up. So after sanding and refilling and sanding and priming again and letting that dry, it's time for some painting. Now for the paint callouts, um, you'll see that they call for the underside of the fuselage a light ghost gray. Uh, but I mixed in a little light blue for a more realistic um, color scheme. And after the paint dries, I masked off the underside of the fuselage wings and the hard points and I used uh, some Tamiya tape and some painters tape for that. I then painted the uh, remainder of the exposed fuselage with a dark yellow for uh, a sand color. While the fuselage was drying I, paint, uh, I painted the rocket pod steel and flat black as well as the missiles painted uh, NATO brown and flat black and I also painted the landing gear a light ghost gray mixed with light blue and flat black. Now the engine exhaust was uh, a titanium color and the gun was gun metal. Dry enough to handle. I painted the flat, uh, top portion of the nose flat black. Next we'll work with the props and uh, we're going to take uh, three of the uh, 84A pieces and 85A pieces and attach those to the rotor hubs and paint them steel and flat black here as uh, as you can see. In some cases of course the internet can be a great source of information and I used it uh, pretty heavily to uh, figure out the camouflage pattern for this uh, air aircraft. Now uh, I used some field green in the airbrush and painted the camo using uh, both the instructions and the photos to get a fairly realistic schema. And then the camo paint uh, in the online photos doesn't really show the color lines, so I airbrushed those without, without masking. I just uh, placed them where it looked like they would have normally been. At this point, things will be coming together rapidly, so carefully remove the tape from the fuselage, uh, except for the canopy. And um, uh, once again, be very careful. You don't want to uh, mess up any of the paint, but if you do, touch it up, let it dry. Now attach all the uh, previous sub-assemblies to the fuselage, the rocket pods, the missiles, landing gear, and the exhaust ports. 
uh, but not the clear parts just yet. And give the model a coat of the uh, pledge uh, floor finish and then uh, let it dry. That will seal everything and uh, helps it aid in handling the uh, model uh, and in placing the decals without silvering. Well, we can apply the decals and some finishing touches. And for this version, there's not too many decals. There's three red X's on the wings, um, a red star on the tail, stripes on the wing tips, and some symbols behind the cockpit along with the uh, number designation. Now, they're nice. They went on well. And um, using some microsoft type setting solutions, uh, they'll conform to the body contours and panel lines. Um, so after that was uh, applied, they were applied, um, you know, use, I use some wash, uh, a dark wash to bring out the uh, screens, uh, uh, intake screens and, and the panel lines uh, with a little Tamiya Black panel wash. Now, uh, give everything a final flat coat after that's dry and then uh, place the remaining clear parts on. Uh, now the wing tip lights paint the, um, the left one, the port side, uh, clear red and starboard right side, a uh, clear green. Now the front top light, 49C, uh, paint that clear red. And then the other two fuselage lights, which are 48C, they're just left clear. Place the clear panel under the nose uh, with some clear part cement carefully and uh, paint the frame around it the same color as the underside. When everything's thoroughly dried, uh, remove the masks from the clear canopy parts and place the wiper on the front of the canopy as shown. Finally, you can place the uh, rotor assembly over the fuselage on the shaft and the model is complete. And there you have it. There's no leftover parts, just some decals for the different liveries. Now, this kit was, um, uh, you know, a little bit difficult and, and took some um, deviation from the instructions. I wouldn't call it a beginner's kit. Uh, more of uh, an intermediate to advanced modeler's kit. Uh, but it's also ripe for um, added detail like uh, all weighted tires or uh, a heat induced droop to the uh, rotors. But nonetheless, it just comes out beautiful. Uh, it's a nice looking kit when you're finished with fairly good detail. Um, so if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. So we hope you like this premium step by step scale model kit review and you can find us on Facebook and at our website but if you don't want to miss any more subscribe to our YouTube channel you can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any review thanks